Not only have I made a cripple hammer chart to signify the lengths of which Cannon went to to damage our livelihoods, but there's no second part to the sentence. I realize that. I made a chart. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So today we're going to talk about each of the Canon cameras, how they're crippled, and which you should buy, if any, while we film ourselves in weird film simulations on the Olympus EM1 Mark III with a 12 mil Tony II. We're in vintage. Take that. Huh? Purple blacks? Anyone? Huh? I'll have some. <laughs> they on sale. So it really is a conundrum, like which Canon camera would you buy if you want to shoot video? And I'm coming from a, a YouTube production type of thing in your studio, a vlogging if needed out in the woods, and wildlife is now an interest of mine. So those are my interests. If you're like, oh, I want street photography, like you're a creep, you're stealing people's expressions. I captured you. She hates you now for the rest of the... Like, you're arrested, in her mind. I'm in the RP. I'm here. Oh, you wish you could film this RP. So let's just talk about the cripples. There's no IBIS. That hurts. A one point, almost 75% crop in 4K, and you don't get autofocus in it. It's the worst, way lower than Panasonic level contrast detect. Not even depth from D-Loser tech. Low dynamic range, almost none. Like worse than most micro four thirds, G9 would crush it. Line skip 1080p, it just looks really bad. It's over sharpened, terrible skin tones. If you own that camera, slap yourself as you thumb this video up. Thumb up and then slap. That's what you deserve. No slow motion. You can't even use aperture priority. There's no custom modes, no C log, 30 minute limit. like. It's hard to recommend this thing for video. For photos, I don't think there's any cripples. It's like the best thing ever. Canon's known for their skin tones. I was shocked when I put the Canon RP versus the Sony a7S III, and the Sony actually had the more pleasing skin tones. I was like, wow, the RP, it's like just so disgusting looking. It doesn't look natural, so it's bad. Don't ever buy one, unless for photos or if you don't care what you look like. I look vintage. Let's switch it up a notch. I'm in Bleach Bypass 2. Fuji only has one. It looks black and white. It's pretty bad, but... So if you're moving up to the Canon EOS R, Canon was nice enough to remove some of these hammers. They don't hurt it as much, but you still have no IBIS. You still have that 75% crop Although that can be an advantage in wildlife. It's like nice, but you're you're not getting full frame, but it can be used. I would love to have the option of cropping, but don't force it upon me. You know what I mean? No auto ISO in C log, that hurts. If you want to be auto and there I don't don't quote me on there being no zebras on that camera. I think there is actually, but they they suck. They're bad zebras. Rebel Zebras. I think I'm in auto ISO now, but usually like if I'm on my Sony in here, everything's manual. But when I go outside, it's auto ISO. So if you want to vlog with the EOS R, that's a bitch. Now you're focusing too much on exposure and you ruin everything. You can't think of anything. 720p slow-mo, manual focus only. That hurts. That's a cripple if I ever seen one. Ah, oh, man. And the 30 minute limit still there. But it looks so much better than the RP that it's worth getting. It's a decent, and it's, you're basically only getting 1080p. It hurts. It hurts. But you could get magic. Slight amounts. I'm black. Come on, man. What do you deal with it? Shit. What, what you got? So the Canon R6, you might be thinking, I want to upgrade from the R. Oh, finally we get 4K no crop. 10 bit, oh my God, do ya? We got overheating problems. R6 is a different color science entirely. Something's different with it. I don't know what it is. It's, they changed it though from the R5 and the R. It's more yellowy, it's not like this. Can't get nice black skin tones. Come on now. 
looks green. I'm a green black guy. No aperture priority. Like why? It's a blatant cripple. You can't. Oh, sorry. We don't have the processing power to decide for you what the shutter speed should be. So when you vlog outside, you have to set your shutter to like weird shit. Like, okay, 2000th. And then some auto ISO can have your back. But it's not good. No custom modes for video. Too bad, it'd be a nice video shooter. It has better 4K 60p than the R5. Ouch. Hard to edit files. If you want the 10 bit. I know some of you don't struggle with it at all and good for you, but it's a major complaint for most people. Even I think Tyler Stallman said like, I wanted to love the R5, but those files, like he had to create proxies. I can't edit them. It's like, okay, with your super Mac and you can do it, cool. But I can't, and most people can't. It's expensive for what it is. 10-bit only in C-Log. It would have been nice to have 10-bit with their standard or faithful. See what that looks like. 30 minute limit, still there. Why are we doing it? It's not even a law anymore. Uh, we just thought you'd get tired after you. I would, holding some of your lenses. 28 to 70, I'm looking at you. So as a black man in the photography community, it's hard to recommend the R6 over the R unless you hate that crop, which you probably do. But it's like, man, you're, it's just a stressful camera. I'm a cartoon now. It's slow and it shows the hot spots of the highlights. The R5 also overheats. Also have the hard to edit files super expensive now we have what i call overkill specs stuff you don't need but it's flashy oh look we have 8k do you but nobody's asking for it no one can use it and then your 4k is crippled by overheating same 10 bit only in c log we don't have c log 2 none of the cameras so far have it but some of the ones above it do but not all of the ones above it have it yeah you should have it though 30 minute limit, interesting, why? For me, the major cripple in the R5 and why I didn't get it are two, just the expensiveness of it. I can't believe how expensive it is and the lenses and just the files. Like I had it, I was editing and I was like, I can't wait to give this back. I can't stand edit, like I can't work like this. It's too much, is this distracting to you? Let's move on. Now, when it comes to the R5C, that should have been what we thought it was, the video-centric R5. It's not, though. They market it as that. There's a lot of flashing going on. Wow, this is weird. The R5C has interesting problems. So, no longer does it overheat, but they remove the IBIS. I don't know if it's good enough with the digital. I haven't tried it with enough lenses. I know... Like IBIS with the 15 mil, it warps, it's not good. So for vlogging, if you're gonna carry that heavy of a setup with the 15 to 35, you might be all right. Or the 16 mil, 22.8, you could get by. Might be even better. If you're slow, I bet I could make it work. But for wildlife, I don't know about that. I don't know about it for photos. Oh, click, just you up your shutter, dickhead. What really hurts in the R5C is the dual pixel autofocus being first generation and not the upgraded one. You can tell like when it moved to the new menu system, that's the C70 menu system and it's worse autofocus. It's not an R5 with video features like you crippled the video autofocus. There's no animal eye detect. Ow, and it's even more expensive. It also suffers from overkill specs, being too high and then just not good enough at the bottom. Actually, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. They got like oversampled 1080p. You have any idea how badly I want to try that? Or the 1080p raw wildlife. Can you imagine it? Oh, 8K to 1080p. Someone send me a clip so I can drool on it. No C-Log 2 though. That's your most dynamic range for video. When everybody's saying like, oh, which camera has the best dynamic range? It doesn't matter. It's what log did they choose to put in it? S-Log3 for Sony, it's in everything. 
Even the ZV-1, like they don't cripple it. They, oh, sorry, it looks like trash. They should remove it. Maybe Canon's being smarter knowing that their sensor isn't fully capable of fully expressing C-Log2 in all its capabilities, so they just don't put it in. That's why I think the 10-bit and C-Log is combined. It just, it won't look right. If C-Log is an 8-bit, they don't let you do it. It's like, no, that won't look right. Don't do it. But I bet the 10-bit in standard or faithful, that would do something. These flashes. I somewhat limited the flashing in this natural position. So R5C, I want it, but I can't believe the crippled autofocus, that hurts, no IBIS, like there's too many things removed for no good reason. I still want it. Doesn't mean I'm gonna buy it. I'm a geisha. We're in grainy film two, of course. So moving up, it's like we still don't have a good option that's like perfect. It doesn't have anything removed. You're moving up to the Canon C70 now, which stands above the others in their lineup. It's more money, it's more designed for video, or is it? Still has no IBIS, that hurts. Still has the dual pixel autofocus first gen, no animal eye detect. Now we've shrunk the sensor, but it's still an RF mount that has no APS-C lenses, so you have nothing really wide. No EVF, goodbye wildlife, it's expensive, it's big and heavy. I don't know why you would ever choose that camera other than like you like adjusting the ND outside as a game. Oh look, I don't need an ND filter, this is so fun. Go make a movie that doesn't suck. Yeah, you can't. If it was me right now trying to decide between Canon C70 and the R5C, it's like the C70 gets C-Log2. So you should have more dynamic range in your full frame camera, but not now because you removed C-Log in your full frame. So it's like, you might want that for more pleasing look, but you couldn't use it for wildlife. That's a bitch. What kind of movie are you gonna, it's overkill for in here, 5.9K, like a cinema cam in here for this? I'm using a cheap thing in weird filter modes. This is fine. It's fun. It's more fun to be cheap. The cheaper you are, the better. I don't know. I think I would lean R5C in the hopes that the digital stable is enough. I know C70 has digital stable as well, but full frame, telephoto. R5C is what I would go with. But C70, you get some stuff. <laughs> My God. Soft, dreamy focus. I wish this wasn't so choppy because I would probably film in this all the time. It's like a black pro mist filter on crack. It's like you stacked 15 of them on there. Oh, that is good times. All right, last option here, Canon R3. It's almost not even an option because of how expensive it is, how big and heavy it is. You still get the hard to edit files. I forgot to mention the R5C and C70 removed the hard to edit cripple. Those are the only two cameras you can actually edit the files on. R3 brings that cripple back for more money. Ouch. No C-Log2 as well. 10-bit only C-Log. There's not a lot of cripples in that, but you can't edit the files, so you have to go to R5C or C70. Only C70 has the C-Log2, so if dynamic range is your goal, that's your only option, but smaller sensor, no lenses. What the fuck? So just glancing at this chart, a quick overview, it's like the Canon RP is so crippled and cheap looking, it's like, ah, it's hard to even recommend. The EOS R, amazing, like it's noticeably better. Even though the side-by-sides, they look very similar, there's a noticeable dynamic range increase and just the image quality, it looks nicer. You get autofocus in the 4K huge crop. R6 and R5 are like better in some ways, but worse than the R. It's like harder to edit files, they overheat. R5C, oh, video centric now, but we lose a bunch of shit. The C70 is, oh, okay, oh, tiny sensor in that, oh no. R3, who has the coins? I'm vlogging in a Canon camera with no IBIS. Oh no, what a mistake. 
So this has me thinking for the future, what are they gonna cripple in their next one? Like the Canon R Mark II, that's gonna sit between the R and the R6, but it can't step on the toes of the R6, so something is gonna be devastatingly crippled in it, and that's just their game plan. They're not in it to make the perfect camera. I don't know what their strategy is. None of them appeal to me as perfect that I would actually buy. It's like I want pieces of each one, but that's what Canon does. They remove and hinder us. Ouch. So of those seven options now that Canon's been in the mirrorless full frame lineup industry, you know, I still lean the EOS R for simplicity and cost. It's like, especially if you're just doing this, 100%, EOS R, 1080p is enough. You don't need the super fine details on your rash on your forehead. You don't need that in your life. R6 and R5, like, now you're struggling to even edit your footage. You're discouraged from making YouTube videos. R5C, it's like, okay, I can make the YouTube videos now, but I spent so much money. Am I worth it? Is my content justifiable in its dollar amount same with the c70 like the higher you move up the more remorse you feel i would lean it has to be the r or the r5c jumping up and hoping that the digital ibis is enough but will it be it's not gopro level i find the active stabe makes things worse on the telephoto that's not good and it's somewhat usable for vlogging but it's just not there yet. A lot of digital staves make things worse, like Nikon, bad. Panasonic, terrible. Olympus is nice, but they also have IBIS, and then it just fixes the flaws of the IBIS. But to rely 100% on the digital, it's not gonna happen. So Canon, you suck. You let a hammer run free in your factory, and he does nothing but damage, even though he looks like he could be useful. If he helped sometimes, but he never does, does he? Wasn't an insult. You've helped sometimes. I wouldn't mind having any of them, really. It's just they cost money. And you deserve the money, that's for sure. But it's just can't really decide which one I want. I want them all so much that it's, hard. it's a tough choice. Rumor says the RP won't have a fucking LCD screen and it will only flip out. I didn't really. Ow. Just for making a mistake on the line, there's an ambulance. So what do you think? Which camera has the least amount of cripples for you? Could be different than for me. And which filter effect did you prefer? One of them for sure. And thank you for watching and buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. There's buttons to be clicked, a thumb up and a subscribe. Don't click the report button. <laughs>